everyone dreams of living an uncommon life. And the best asset you have to achieve your dreams is you. Welcome to the Uncommon Wealth Podcast. We're going to introduce you to people who are living uncommonly. We're also going to give you some tools and strategies for building wealth and for pursuing an uncommon path that is uniquely right for you. Hello and welcome everybody to another episode of the Uncommon Wealth Project where I'm your host, Philip Ramsey. Uh, Super excited. I have a guest, the one and only David Barwin on the phone and on Zoom. So we get a look at each other. You guys probably can't see us, but uh, can't wait to dive into his Uncommon. I known him for probably about 11 weeks right now. Ask me how I know, because I'm going through a program that he facilitates. It's called Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses. Many other entrepreneurials know this program, but he has a whole nother life too that I kind of want to unpack. He is also like all things business at Iowa Central Community College, the one and only pre- like professor extraordinaire, doesn't do any of the bad classes, only the good stuff, entrepreneurship, all this stuff, the things that I think our, our listeners are going to be excited to hear, um, and also a father of three children. So he's got a lot to juggle, but welcome to the show, David. I'm so grateful you're here. Oh, Phil, thanks for having me. Very excited to be a guest. I was honored that that you asked, and uh, yeah, a uh, lot going on and, and proud to talk about it and just loving life. Yeah, good. And so for those listeners that are just jumping on to hear David, uh, we do have a podcast. It's called the Uncommon Wealth um, Podcast, where we try to interview people that are doing uncommon things. And we define that in many different ways. But one of them is like they love their life. You can tell, David, you enjoy your life. And so that's one thing I want to unpack is when you were first like getting into, you know, the whole teaching and or not teaching, but just school, they always ask you like, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? What did you say? I would love to know this answer. <laughs> Professional baseball player, right? Oh, I, I yes. Mean, yeah. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's okay. Like, you know, when I was growing up, you know, I mean, sports in the neighborhood was everything. I was good at baseball. Um, so, yeah, I mean, wanted to pursue that. Um, ended up being a, a, a track athlete um, out, out of high school. And then that that led me into coaching which wow. led me into um, teaching and and it just, you know, it opened up a lot of doors. So I could say starting out in athletics. Um, but what, what really is when I got into coaching, um, I really found a joy in, in helping others. That's good. And a lot of the excitement came from like, wow, I get to help this person find joy, success, you know, excitement and, and what they're after. And yeah. it, it really just, just fueled me. I just loved being a part of that. That's cool. It's where did you grow up? I want to just kind of preface that it was yes. Pennsylvania, right? Pennsylvania, yeah. Started yeah. out in a, in a small town, um, Johnsonburg, Pennsylvania. That's where my family originated from. Uh, my father then he um, was a business owner, and then he had a um, government and political career. He worked for the um, Auditor General of Pennsylvania's office for a majority of his career. So that led us to Erie, Pennsylvania, right on Lake Erie. So wow. I, I really was beneficial. I got to grow up in a small town, yep. wrapped around, you know, everybody knew, yeah, and, mm-hmm. and, and you know, you had that. But then uh, middle school, I got to experience city life, um, and it really just opened me up. And I, I'm just grateful because it gave me a different perspective on, yeah. on what's out there. Um, and my yeah. father was always big on us traveling each summer, and, and he, they had a motor home. And he would take us around really to make sure that we got to see a lot. Um, and so, yeah, Pennsylvania. And then uh, I was coaching at Penn State uh, Barron. They're the engineering school of Penn State. They're a D3. And I was coaching track and field there. Uh, my high school coach recommended me. I got the assistant job. Um, and, and and I loved it. And I'm like, okay, I'm in the college ranks. And, and my goal yeah. was, you know, I'll be an athletic director one day, right? Okay. Um, but – I wasn't being allowed to recruit or or get the experience of recruiting. And if if anybody on here knows college athletics, it's ninety percent recruiting, ten percent coaching for <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've I heard always this. I always say nobody ever won the Kentucky Derby with a mule, you know. So <laughs> you got to be out and get. So Iowa Central in Fort Dodge, um, they were starting cross country and track and field, and so. I thought, hey, I'll go to a junior college. I'll get twice as much recruiting experience. I'll be on the ground level of how to build a program up. 
that will fit into the experience that I want for my goals, you know, as an athletic department, or, you know, or director, being able to, to run the department and know what goes on. So I made the jump out here and, and never turned back. Wow. That's, that's a great synopsis of where you are kind of currently. I yeah. want to know, because the transition from being an athlete to a coach is one that I don't know a lot of people unpack. And for me, like I've coached a couple things and I'm like, just give me the ball. Like, give me the ball. I'll do it my <laughs> kind of thing. So <laughs> tell me about that for you. Was that easy for you? Was it hard? Like, was there times when you wanted to be like, I'll just run it for you, man? Like, give it yeah, to yeah, you know, that's interesting because it's it it was a challenge yeah. to, you know, it, it it got to a point where my athletic career was over. Mm-hmm. And I, I didn't want to let it go. And mm-hmm. and so what do you do, right? Hey, I'm going to go coach, right? Because I still need to be a part of it and I still need to, yeah. to yeah. feel it. And um, so it, it was challenging. I remember the first few years, like I would still run and I could beat some of the kids, and, you know, <laughs> yeah. and like, hey, you know, coach still has it. And some of the kids that I coached, that they had known about my career. Um, they were wow. they were freshmen when I was a senior. And now I'm coaching some of them. And, and so that was kind of invigorating, like, whoa, you right. know, like they they know what I can do. But I very quickly fell into the joy of I can't do it anymore. So all my energy is going to go into getting them to do it and, yeah. and collectively together. Uh-huh. And and so that's, you know, again, it sparked a lot of energy for me in that I, I got a, a lot of excitement, a lot of, you know, just great vibes and, and a kick out of like watching these kids like set their goals high and then reach them when they think yeah. maybe they couldn't have. Right. And and right. it was there was just no turning back. It's good because I, I make fun of myself, but at some point there was a transition for me as well of like actually it's more rewarding to watch somebody else achieve their goals and be able to be a part of their story somehow. Yeah. Like there is something very rewarding about that because you can't do it. Like a true leader just needs people around them and also needs to inspire them to become greater, see potential in them and prove it to them that I'm going to show you how to get there. There is something really rewarding about that. And so it totally makes sense that you would fall into, you know, Iowa Central teaching, professing and start trying to figure out like, how do I empower others, not only in their like physical shape, but also in their business and aspirations for their life. Because at some point you you kind of realize as an athlete, like, oh, I guess I can't be a professional baseball player, you know? Right. And although it's funny, everybody, I shouldn't say everybody, a lot of people have that mentality at first. I got to talk to my fifth grade class, my son's fifth fifth grade class, and I can't tell you how many of the boys want to be professional like football players as we were talking about careers or or, sure. or professional baseball players. And I said like my best advice for you guys, for whoever want to enter into the field, go get a mentor that is where you want to go. And for you, you know, professional athletes, the harder it is for you to get a mentor, the harder it is to actually achieve that goal. <laughs> so yeah, it was kind yeah. of like this, like wheels are yeah. turning. Like, how do I get uh, Patrick Mahomes to be my mentor? Like, <laughs> right. I don't know. Like, but if you can yeah. figure it out, like you got a better shot to get it there. But yeah. okay. So you're jumping into Iowa Central now. They ask you to be a business, uh, I would say, professor mm-hmm. of all different things. And did you feel the same excitement in pouring into these students as you did coaching, or is it a little bit different? No, it's it is it is the same. And and I say this too: if if you're good at sports, the mentor will find you. Uh, <laughs> you know that's true. And and so because I, I I teach a lot of athletes now, and and I talk to them about. Where, where do you want to go? Like, what do you want to do when you get out of here? And a lot of them are here to build their stock up and, and go to a university. And so we, we talk about what things need to come and play, who's recruiting you. And so I said, look, if they're not finding you, you know, you got to find something to do. And I would say this too, you know, sometimes I think students that where they get shut out of something that they're passionate about, mm. they, they give it up. Yeah. Instead of looking for other ways to pursue it. And I try mm-hmm. to use myself as an example for them of like, hey, I, I loved competing. I loved athletics. I didn't want to let it go. So rather than going and getting a 40 hour a week, you know, career job or something that just pays the bills, I wanted to stay in, in athletics and still be as close to my passion as I could. I, you know, my, my first year, 
um, I, they said, well, you know, you're doing all these jobs around campus, you know, tutoring and RA and, and coaching and, and stuff. And they said, you know, business, you teach some business classes. And so I, I really just took who I am and what I'm doing for the, the students that I'm, I'm coaching. And I put that right into the classroom. I really mm. felt like I have to be authentic or they're not going to believe me. They're not going to learn from me. And I'm not really going to have an impact on them. Right. Um, and so still to this day, um, I have students that say like, you're more like a coach than you are a professor, you know? <laughs> like, Amen. Amen. I love and I, yeah. And I'm like, Hey, great. And, um, mm. I do a lot of different assessments in the classroom and, and I have things called competition learning and, uh, you know, they, they like it. It's, it's a fun day, but again, it goes back to that setting them up with a challenge, see if you can overcome it, feel good yeah. about doing right. it while you learn on the, right. learn on the way. So the, the, the president that was here, Dr. Paxton, he was my mentor. Uh, he discovered that I had the talent to be in the classroom um, and I was passionate about it and I was connecting with students and I was working really hard too to make sure that I was understanding what they were supposed to be learning. So I was mm -hmm. almost doing two things at once. I was mm -hmm. trying trying to be impactful in the classroom and coach them up, but also making sure that I was staying ahead of the game on what I needed to teach them. And I loved business. I grew up with business. And so it just meshed. It was just the perfect yeah. fit. Good. Um, so yeah, it was, it was really cool to, to get in there and to do that and to impact their lives. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that because I was going to bring that up and then I'm going to have a follow-up question, but the fact that you got to witness your father be an entrepreneur, like, you know, the best things are kind of like witnessed instead of like being taught. And so you've learned a lot just watching your father and just being a little guy observing that stuff. I hope my kids are getting something good out of what I'm doing, but who knows? Probably right. we'll see. But how do you think uh, that's impacted you today? I want to just quick, mm -hmm. quick answer. What do you think? Uh, it, it, he's had a tremendous impact on my life. It, you know, knowing his story, you know, he, he went to college on his own, you know, he, he, bought the business on his own, uh, went to night school, you know, he created his career on his own. And that's something that I just always remember him talking about and sharing examples of. And so to me, that was the only way to do it. Like, yeah. you got to go out and now he's 100% supportive of me. And I know he's always there for me. But there's a certain pride of like, no, dad, I'm doing it like you're doing it. I took my own path, I took my own route. And so it, it was a huge influence. And okay. then just listening to his stories. As a matter of fact, I know you said short, but I'm proud of this. Yeah, get it. Let's go. I make it a point to call him or text him anytime I experience something from one of his teachings. Uh, and so I'll say, dad, I remember back when, you know, you were going through negotiations in the auditor general's office and I just experienced that. And I'm so glad that you told me that because I was able to do a, B, and C. And he asked me one day, just a couple of years ago, he's like, why, why do you do this so regular? And I said, well, you need to know, you need yeah. to know that, you know, that like we were saying, we hope that they listen and I hope my kids <laughs> yeah. listen too. Right. But I think the biggest gift I can give back to him is like, dad, I, I took what you showed me and, and taught me Heck yeah. and, I, and I'm using it right. in, in my growth. And I want you to know that before, yeah. you know, Maybe I yeah, tell no, it's good. And every like this is a saying I heard. I didn't create this, but every time somebody passes away, a library burns down. And what you're telling him is like, listen, I got your books that you've written. Yeah. You know, like that's a cool thing. Yeah. I love that you do that. Yeah. How do you that, feel like your fathering and parenting has how do you be that intentional? Like obviously you coach and you teach. Mm -hmm. But how do you instill that in your children? This is a personal question. So for all of your yeah. listeners, like, how does this end up in business? This is just for me. So back off. This is I, I can tell you that my early days of coaching, you know, basketball and, and, and track, I had to tone it down when I got home. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I'm overly competitive. Matter of fact, I, I, I really didn't coach my kids in their early years. I It, it wasn't a good a good fit for me. Yeah. I can coach the older kids. I'm not really great with the, the younger ones. You know, I want kids that are looking at you, like, tell me how to be great. Right. That's right. That's and, right. and so, <laughs> you know, I, I didn't get to coach him, but I did have to balance. Okay. They're, they're not going to respond to coach mm. every day with such intensity. I've got to learn how to be dad. I got to learn how to be coach. 
and and give it to them. And so it still goes on now. I, I see some of the eye rolls like, oh boy, here you know, here goes an hour with dad <laughs> that was telling me this or, okay, or sharing good. that or like, hey, I want you to know this is how it, it developed. But it was a conscious effort of of making sure that they always knew that, hey, I, I'm dad first, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I love you and I support you. And you know, I want to hear from you. And if I am being too coach, you got to let me know. And my one daughter, Emma, had no problem pointing it out. I think she <laughs> liked to, hey, you're being too much coach right now. And I was like, oh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> That's like, good. gotcha. Yeah. It's actually um, refreshing to hear that because I feel like I want to try to be intentional with my kids. And sometimes yeah. it's like, this is not working. This is not working. <laughs> so <laughs> let's pull back here. Yeah. I, some of it too, um, It's it's just instead of me telling, I ask more questions. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a tool that I've used to make yeah. sure that I Good. don't just, you know, bark at them or or or, or talk at them. Mm-hmm. That if I want them to know something, I, I let me get engaged with them and ask them right. some questions first and get them talking. Um, and then ironically, Phil, this is funny. My son, he's 13. He he does this to me now. And so I <laughs> love it. <laughs> he'll want to he'll want to tell me something or or maybe ask me for something. And he'll start out with, uh, Dad, you know, hey, how was your day? Or how did, you know, how did it go with 10K when you got back? And I'm like, dude, you're using all the stuff. Yeah, now, easy you know? now. I know your tactics. <laughs> I know your tactics. It's funny. I, um, I've been working on this it was my children are competing and, and they're, they're playing lacrosse, which I don't know anything about lacrosse. So 90% of the time I'm like asking people like, can you do that? That's how knowledgeable I am. Uh, and so afterwards, I've been a little bit more mindful of asking the kids, how do you, how do you think you did? Like, how are, or like, how are you doing? Instead of like, Hey, I'm so proud of you. Like asking them, like, how are you, how do you think you did? And then kind of mirroring whatever they say, like, Oh, I did great. Like, Oh, you did so good. It was fun to watch it. You know, or if it's like, Oh, I'm frustrated. Our team didn't do well. Like, how can I help? You know, like, is there anything? So to like, let them go through the emotions instead of, I think in the past of like, Hey, I'm so proud of you. Like, these are the four things I thought she did well. Here's two things that you can maybe, yeah. let's just pull back. <laughs> no, what do you think you did? You know, it's, that's the great way to handle it. I, I, I've gotten my kids to talk more mm. because of that approach mm. of saying, Hey, you know, well done. How, how do you think it, it went? Right. right. And, and right. because as soon as you start getting out your, your agenda, you yep. know, they're, they're not they're not going to talk to you after that because they're like, no, I'm I'm done. Like, I don't right. want you know. Right. Um, and so, yeah. And then I try to highlight too, you know, that, hey, here's what I saw that you did well. And I'm the same with soccer. I didn't grow up playing yeah. soccer. My son plays soccer. They got a good squad. And I'm like, hey, I saw this and this. Was that the right thing that you were doing? Right. You know, or like, hey, yeah. would coach say to you in, in right. that moment? Yeah. Or what were you trying to accomplish by that? Uh, and the other thing too is I I never try to say after a contest I love you, huh? I I, I that's I'll, good. I'll say hey I, I'm proud of you. Mm. Like that was a, I loved your your performance, your effort, your. But I always save love for outside. I don't ever want my son or the girls to connect my love of them of their performance ability. Right, right. And, and I good. I think that's where because. I mean, how, how devastating! You know, my boy and I are very close, and if he doesn't have a good game, and and I'm not going to sugarcoat it, mm-hmm. I'm going to tell him mm-hmm. like you didn't have a good game. And if he connects that with my approval of love, yeah, mess. You know, I, I'm creating mess. A, a mess for him later down the yeah. road. So very rarely yeah. does he hear after a game, "Oh man, I'm proud and I love you." It, it's, yeah, hey, yeah, I'm proud of you, but I'm going to tell you later that I love you. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so now we get to talk about ten thousand. So Goldman yeah. Goldman Sachs has ten thousand small businesses. This is a foundation that I believe Goldman Sachs has, and mm-hmm. in that, their I guess mission is to try to pour into small businesses, help them be more efficient, help them kind of work through, help them work on the business, not in the business, as it's far too easy to do. And you are the facilitator for the Iowa area, so that's the reason why you and I know each other. Uh, and so you've got to kind of coach slash facilitate me. So I'm sure all the listeners are like, how in the hell that was, was that, you know? So, but it was, <laughs> it's been a joy to be able to kind of get to know you and the people that you surround yourself with, because many people, I don't know many people, but people describe it as getting a master's in your own business. And so there's modules. It's a 12 week program. 
I'm kind of I'm not taking away your thunder, but I'm trying to <laughs> kind of set the stage here. Sure. Uh, and each module, each week, you go through something different. So the first one is like, what could be your opportunity growth? The second week is kind of like, okay, who are you dealing? Like, what is your business? And then who is your in your business? What is your leadership style? So all these are kind of modules. What is your finances? Like your mm-hmm. balance sheet, your cash flow, your profit loss sheet, like all these things that as business owners, you know, you need to do, but you just don't have time necessarily to do it. So there's 12 modules and you get to facilitate that. So in your own language, in your own definition, what would you say the 10,000 small businesses is? It's, it's a program to teach you, as you mentioned, to work on your business rather than in your business. Right. And you're seeing now from the the schedule that we have, like we're, we're we're building you out to block time for you when you leave the program to work on the business. If you can work on it and plan for growth, then you're going to be able to hire for growth. Hmm. And that's I think where the, the 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 big gold nugget is for the program is every business owner in Iowa that takes it, they can go back to their communities and they can create jobs. Hmm. And so if they're growing it, they're going to hire for that growth. And that's going to, you know, impact their community greatly by growing their business, creating jobs in in that that community. You're going to empower people to do more. You're going to create other relationships and partnerships, and so that's the beauty behind it. It's it's a philanthropic uh, wing of Goldman Sachs. It's a free program. They they fund it, but it doesn't cost anything for the business owners. You know, there's a, a, a extensive interview process, right, to go through to to get in. Um, and and Jackie uh, Bolt, she's our director, and we've worked together for six years now since it's been implemented, and she's phenomenal. And she she says the interview process is also to protect business owners that aren't quite ready. Yeah. And so we've had people apply and not get in, but Jackie says here's the things that you need to work on get to that level because we want you to have that success of the program when when you're there so you got to meet that level and so that that's very important for us too to make sure that the right people are getting it at the right time right um but that's the reward that that i get is because i i I think it's just so special that if people can impact their communities and and give back in the terms of job creation we're going to have stronger communities better communities and we're going to bring some more people together Right. So I am uh, in the cohort 11. So you've, it's the Goldman Sachs in Iowa has been around at least for 11 other times, but that yes. hasn't been always, you haven't always facilitated it, right? You started no. in 2019. Yeah. So I was on the original team when, when they launched in Iowa. So it's a national program, but they started to bring it to the state level. And so it came to Iowa and I was selected. Uh, they went to the community colleges and said, well, Hey, we want community college instructors to deliver this content, this material, which Babson College uh, created the content in partnership with uh, Goldman Sachs. And they're the number one entrepreneurial school in the country for the last decade, <laughs> I would say even longer. And so their curriculum is, is phenomenal. And I really believe in the curriculum. It's very practical. It's it's not, uh, you know, case studies and go figure out how to apply it. It's, it's right. you taking it and working on your business. Um, through the curriculum. So I really loved the model of it. But yeah, when I went there, I was just responsible for uh, mine was it's the people, the leadership and the hiring, which is now uh, mod five. Um, And so yeah, I got into it. I I really loved it. Um, And I connected and I was um, got good ratings and so forth. Um, and then the, uh, another guy had my role and and he stepped away and Jackie called and said, Hey, like, you want to do it? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> let's know, go. That, that's been the goal. Like, let's, let's Good. get it done. Um, and so I, you know, it's, it's just, I believe in the curriculum. I believe in the team that we have together, which is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I work really hard to make sure that we stay high level with our delivery and the team has bought into that hundred percent. The people around us are great. Um, and so we really care about the impact that we're that we're making. And so it's been an easy transition for me to do it. I would say the only thing that I really adjusted, um, the first two modules, I was uh, mod faculty, then th- from three to 11, I was lead faculty. The one thing that I, I really incorporated a little differently was the sense of togetherness and relying on each other mm-hmm. as you go through the program, That's good. because I want you to create relationships and partnerships and that network to be there for each other as you leave. Right. Um, and so that's working. We see um, increased numbers every cohort in the alumni program as, as you all stay involved. 
So yeah, it, it, it's been great. I love the path on how I got involved and what I was able to do. Yeah, it's been it's been fun to be able to like from a facilitator to another facilitator. You do a great job of keeping us on task. But I think a great facilitator are the people who know when to okay stop. Like there's something here, and there were there's we were in uh, our in person our first time. All you know, there's 32 of us in this kind of room talking, and you know you have to stay on, on point here. You have to stay on schedule. And there was one specific conversation that we had. And I remember gaining a lot of respect for you because you were like, Hey, like, let's keep working on this. Let's kind of keep working through this. And immediately I was like, Oh, that was the right play because it was a fairly touchy, dicey, heavy topic that you didn't want to just be like, okay, we'll, we'll get to that later. Like parking lot that let's move on. And I thought, Ooh, and you did an f- amazing job. So I think you, not only how you facilitated it, but how you read the room and how you continue to, just, like, to help your team and the people you surround yourself with provide high content for people that are going through it. Because a lot of times, you know, you're, the business owners are deer in the headlights. Like, I got to do what on top of what? Like, yeah. it's just a lot. And so kudos to you. I don't know. Uh, I want to say you. that publicly. And, I, and I, I remember that. And, and you know, I'm, I'm kind of, I get poked at by the team and the scholars about being a stickler for time, you know, because we're going to start, we're going to finish, you yep. know, but that's the value of everybody's time. And I remember we were up against a break and I'm like, hey, this is too good. Like everybody is into this. Yeah. And what's coming out of it is, is, is special. And uh, yeah, I remember talking about, okay, I'm sorry that you might have had calls planned, but that was too good to pass up. Yeah, so we, we had to do it. Yeah, that's good. And it All is, right. it's, it's reading the room. What's your favorite module to, to still go through? Is it that leadership and your people part? You know, it, it's hard for me. Um, I like them all because yeah. each time you guys go through one, like seeing the new discoveries and the confidence, especially like financials, you know, mm-hmm. that's one that's a little scary for everybody. And then when you're done with it, you, you know, there's really an empowerment. Sure. Um, but I got to say my my favorite one to really be a part of an experience is Mod 7 Process and Operations. Yeah, that was a good and one. That, because there's, there's so much of the program that you just did that drives you to that mm-hmm. and now you're starting to show people how to put it all together mm-hmm. and it's just something that uh, you know a lot of light bulbs go off a lot of aha moments a lot of takeaways and people tie it back to the different things that they gained that's the one i i, I still get like oh i can't wait for this let's go you know that's good that's good so tell me um what has been like your favorite aha moment that other people have gotten through the ten thousand small businesses thing that you've been able to facilitate that's a tough question everyone and this is like coming off the left side so (laughs) watching david likes wheels turning kind of fun for me yeah that that's a challenging one because each week provides you know joyful points for for me uh and the team to see you know some things we know are coming um some things come out that like okay you know maybe we didn't think it was going to come out of that stage of your business and and it and it did. Mm-hmm. Um, I I think for me, probably I would have to say business owners that that didn't think that they had a strong enough business to create more growth. Mm. And and so when they got into the program, you know, I, and I'm thinking of one business owner just a couple of cohorts ago was just adamant about. I don't really want to grow my business. I'm just here to make sure how I, I do it more effectively and efficiently. And, and I just had to work very strategically mm-hmm. with that person to say, hey, I, I get it, but open up to this opportunity. Mm-hmm. And, and by the end of it, okay, this business owner um, had ended up create, getting a patent and in creating um, an environmentally friendly product. Hmm. that was sustainable for, um, you know, like confidentiality, but sustainable yeah. for um, animals, if you will. Wow. And and it was just something like great, great person, awesome person, and 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 was really stubborn in what, what he was looking to do. But he opened up, and then when he gave his pitch at the end in the closing, everybody was blown away. 
Oh, wow. It was, it was like, wow. I love like, it. did not see that coming from him. Yeah. Um, right. And, and he, I mean, he, he nailed it. It was, um, it was a great idea. He got the patent. He found a company to make it for him. Uh, it's sustainable and his profit margins uh, were huge. Through the roof. Yeah. yeah. That was really exciting. It's interesting because, like, if you think about coaching track, like, you're working on people in all different, like, aspects. You could be doing high jump, long jump, pole vault, sprints, yeah. relays. Like, there's a lot of different things. And I feel like that's a little bit, like, probably facilitating this 10,000 businesses. Like, you could have somebody doing a, a patent for a company and doing a sustainable thing for an animal. And then you also have like popcorn over here, you know, like, so it's yeah. like, what's happening or there's just a lot of different things, but I think the principles still apply very well. And then I would say you might not, maybe you observed this, but I feel like one thing that I have observed in just our own cohort, again, I've done this with uh, just once. So I feel like as Midwesterners, or maybe this is generally what happens. I don't know, but I'm just in the Midwest. So here we are is like we don't push ourselves to have a big lofty like vision. Like I feel like we had to be all pushed to be like it's too small. Like yeah, it probably is. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Do you yeah. see that too or am I crazy? Yeah, absolutely. I mean that that is a major point that as a team. So we we focus on that having that attention early on. So even before you get to mod 2 of opportunity and growth to really think outer space blue sky all right i'm i'm dropping hints to you from day one to start thinking about it and that's where julie comes in at the end of the closing and, and does a little intro to mod two really to get that flowing because we, we we've run into that you know that um it's it's hard sometimes to to push people to hey get out of your comfort zone think big you yeah. know don't yeah. just think of that and the other strong point too is the, the the business advisors, Carrie, Jackie, and I, the mod faculty, we're all on the same page mm -hmm. of encouraging that growth of opportunity. And so when you talk about managing all the different aspects from high jump to pole vault to long jump, our business advisors are excellent because, you know, they spend a lot of time with you guys and they're the ones that have the skill set to deal mm -hmm. with the popcorn owner. Yeah. To the to the farmer to, to the, the financial company advisor. to the financial <laughs> yeah. advisor to you know yeah. there's a lot of you know I, I'm trying to keep it on the track yeah. and, and keep right. us going forward um, but they're the ones that are supporting that but the beauty of it Phil I think what happens is somebody in your in, in your group goes and does it and I think that's what opens it up to okay I heard it I got pushed but now mm -hmm. I'm seeing somebody that I connected with really do it. I need to do it. And I think that it's, yeah. I don't want to say it's pure pressure, but it pure exper experience. And I yeah, think that's right. the beauty of it. As we get everybody connect, then that you're excited about, okay, mm -hmm. I, I'm going to, I'm going to break away from the chains here and, and go do something big. That's true. And like, I don't know if I have a lot of different places where I can go and hang out with other people that own their own business. There is something about that that's just life giving that there's other people out there in this vast ocean that are still kind of working through the same stuff that I am. And entrepreneurship is lonely. Like there is just lonely. So one of the big things for me is just getting around other like-minded people that are creating something mm -hmm. that also are like, but I also have to make income off of this thing because like I got to feed the family. Like right. for me, that was super encouraging. So to see some of these people have their aha moments, I, I would agree with you. Yeah. Peer pressure or whatever, but it just, pushes you to try to be better. Like you want to be a part of that. Yeah. And I do see like there's level of engagement as all groups will have when you have 32 different people. But I do see that this cohort, in my opinion, again, I've only done one, really gelled well together. And we yeah. all are like here to, hey, I'm not here to yeah. condemn, but be honest mm -hmm. and be uplifting and encouraging to each other, which, you know, just thrives with enthusiasm and, and growth and how can we get better? And so that to me, the atmosphere is exactly what I believe that you wanted to build. So it's fun to see that. And I think that the vulnerability that everybody fits into going forward, okay, if, if I open up and I'm honest, then I can really get a lot of feedback and I can give to others. And you guys have all done that really well. And, and that is a successful point of it. But like you see on Fridays, you know, we celebrate, you know, entrepreneurship's lonely. We celebrate business owners are like, I just got a new vendor and it's going to save me this much compared yeah. to the person that's like, I just signed this huge contract. 
Yeah. You, you know, and so it, it, it's it's awesome to me that the, the degrees of su- successful moments that we're celebrating while we're together mm-hmm. are all celebrated at their highest level. And as an entrepreneur, you don't always get to have that. Not everybody's going to be excited for you that you hired a new person to take orders. Right. But for right. you, that's the biggest thing in your world right now. And it's awesome. And so that's to right. be collective around is that yeah. special to watch as well. Yeah. And I think that you guys do a good job of talking behind our backs. Here's what I mean, because that sounds kind of scary, but it's the business owners. You get like a business associate or a business admin. What do you call them? BA business? Business advisors. Yeah. Advisor, the BA, there we go. The BAs. Yeah. Yep. So you get one assigned to you as you go through this 12 weeks. And as you're communicating with them, like you don't really know, like you just, this is what's going on. And I remember one time in that, Hey, let's call it. You were like, Philip, you had something going on. I was like, I did have something going on, which meant that like, there is communication between you and the other BAs and like the administrator to like, hey, what's going on in the people that you're pouring into? I really kind of felt like, oh, I appreciate that. Like, I wouldn't have normally done that because I'm like, let other people talk. But uh, it was nice to be able to have people speaking on your behalf and truly caring about you and talking about without you being in the room. There's something about that that's like life-giving, in my opinion. it's a neat thing. And I, and I will say this, we, we respect confidentiality at its highest level because we are dealing with, you know, like I don't have access to your financials. I don't have access to your, to your live plan. So we, we do meet as a team and we talk about the progress of the, the cohort. And, and what's really special about it is everybody on a team. And I say this wholeheartedly and, 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 and Carrie included, you know, I mean, you know, I love Carrie. She's the program manager. Yeah. She's great. Um, but we, we all goal. Number one is you have a great experience. Mm. And, and if you have a great experience, then you're going to have an action plan. You're going to connect with everybody. You know, the, mm-hmm. the, the fruits of the labor are going to pay off. And so we we do chat and and make sure like hey how is everybody doing right? right you know and it's not just does anybody need help or support it's hey these people are doing some great things yeah. and again to go back to that peer experience if you're shy and you want to let somebody else talk about it well I need you to get it out because that's you know somebody's showing up to hear from you you don't know it and that's right. a good example and so yeah we 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 do talk we manage the program as it goes forward to make sure that everybody's getting the, the most out of it that they that they can. Yeah. Um, and that's just the the level of quality that we all bought into. Yeah, I kind of call it just intentional leadership, right? Like that yeah. to me is intentional leadership, which is always kind of, yeah, it's, it's nice. If you're going to be a good leader, you got to know your people. You do, absolutely. Hard, hard to not. So, okay, you have to get nominated to be part of this 10,000 small businesses. So if you are a business owner that's listening to this, uh, and want to be nominated or want to learn more about the program, where would they go, David? Yeah, um, go to 10K Iowa, 10,000 Small Businesses Iowa. Punch that into your search engine to Google. Um, it'll come up. They'll have the the links on there, the contact information. Um, you can get nominated. That's where we get a majority of the, the business owners that come in is that they're nominated by others. Uh, but we also have a lot of sessions that um, Civetta, and and Jackie and Carrie go around and they meet at community events and they get the word out about the program. And so we have people apply through that as as well. Yeah. All right. And so yeah, all that information, you can get it off DMAX website too. They're the host college for it. Mm. So it is statewide through all the community college programs, but 10,000 small businesses, Iowa, into the search engine, and and you can see. And the website is really clean. It gives you the details, it gives you what you need to know. But it encourages you to reach out, and then our team takes over from there. Yeah, it's a pretty smooth process. So, all right, David, uh, thank you for just unpacking all of your uncommon, with myself at least, and the seven listeners that are listening. I'm just kidding. Uh, But I do want to tell you, like, just be encouraged. I feel like, you know, success could have been endless for you, and yet you found a place to be able to pour into not only your family, but the students that you get access to and the business owners that you get to pour into. And I believe you're making an impact. And I think that's one of the characteristics I see as an uncommon person, is not person that holds it to themselves, but pours out to others to make them better, bigger and better. And I feel like the ripple effect that's happening because of your you, like you can see the ripple effect where I feel like if you would have pushed your career in other areas, and I'm sure you've had peers of like, hey, where are you at? Like Fort Dodge, what's happening? 
But I feel like you can see the ripples and you get to enjoy the ripples. Sounds so dumb, but no, you can it's, versus it's, like going to, let's say you go to California and like you're making a huge impact. Sometimes you just don't see the impact you get a, you wit, like you to witness the impact you're making. And so I feel like you're in a great spot. I feel like that makes you uncommon. Uh, I don't know. What was your thoughts on that? Yeah. I, I, first of all, thank you. I really appreciate it. And you know, to to not sound um, you know cocky or arrogant, I, I I think I'm extremely successful. You know, yep. I I wake up every day. I, I love what I do. You know, I, I support my family. I support my lifestyle that I'm after. Um, and I do have friends. You know, on the East Coast. What what are you doing out there, man? You know, you're <laughs> you know you're a young guy. You're earning power. And I'm like, look, you know, I, I'm making an impact. And, not and, worth and it, I, man. I, I love it out here. Good. And you, you're going to want this job when you're done working, you know, 80 <laughs> hours a week and That's so right. forth. And so, Good. you know, it's, it's, Phil, it's, it's, it's what I'm, it's what I'm most proud of is I have a lot of time to be with my family. Students come to community college, not always knowing mm. what they're capable of doing right. and what career options are available. And so for me to be a part of, Hey, Here's some careers that you you could go after and they find that motivation or they came out and they're like, gosh, I don't know if I'm college is right for me. And, and so for me to see that from start to finish and they have that is it, there's no better reward. And, and it just it, it fuels me going on. Mm. And I, I was so fortunate then to have the 10K program come along because I got to be a, a business person again. Right. And and yes. so, it, you know, to, to have the best of both worlds, I got time with the family. I'm impacting young people's lives, getting confidence, go out and pursue their dreams. And I'm also working with business owners to recognize their growth and dreams and yeah. impact their communities. And so <laughs> at the sake of, you know, patting myself on the back, I don't know what else I could possibly do to find more joy. That's good, man. That's uncommon right there. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Um, so here's a follow up for this. I would just so I get a I'm, I have reached out to probably seven or eight cohorts uh, to have them on the podcast. What do you think the one or two questions that I have to ask them in the podcast? Uh, one or two questions. How strict is David about time? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Deal. I, I Deal? think you'll you'll get you'll get a lot of answers about that. Um, I think the uncommon question, Phil, was what what was their greatest takeaway mm. now being removed from the program? You know, they're, they're, they're alumni. They still get to have the benefits of the alumni. The program is ongoing. But I'd be really curious to hear, hey, now that you went through it and you utilized it, where, where are you now? Like, what was your biggest takeaway looking mm. back? Because you know this, too. We, we don't always recognize – what we have or or what we're into it while we're in it. Mm-hmm. And and so right. to take some time back to reflect, I that that would be something I would really like to hear them say, you know, where, where are they now with it? How they use it? What was that special gold nugget? That's good. I'll do it. Yeah. All right, David. Uh dude, you're a winner. You're uncommon. I appreciate your time. And if any of our listeners want to reach out to you, how would be the best way to connect with you? Uh Barwin at iowacentral.edu is my okay. email and David Barwin on Facebook. Um, I do have social media, but Facebook is the one that, you know, call me an old head if you want. But yeah, that's, that's right. I, yeah. Yeah. I didn't sign up for TikTok. So, you know, uh, but yeah, reach out to me, even if you want to Google David Barwin or call the college and say, Hey, I need to talk to the bald business guy. Um, you know, that, that works out well, but yeah, Barwin, Iowa central.com or Facebook and, and happy to uh, field any questions. If anybody feels that, need to reach out. Love to connect. That's great. Well, hey, you've been listening to the Uncommon Wealth Podcast. I've been your host, Philip Ramsey. Till next time, go be uncommon. That's all for this episode. Brought to you by Uncommon Wealth Partners. Be sure to visit UncommonWealth.com to learn more about our services. Don't miss an episode as we introduce you to inspiring people who are actively pursuing an uncommon life.